We've just had our first question and answer session, live question and answer session, and it went really well, apart from one tiny detail. I forgot to push the record button. So for those of you who've sent in questions, I'm gonna go through it again now so that you can actually get the answers to the questions that you asked. I did go through them on the call, but that's not gonna do you much good. So I'm gonna record them here again. What I've done is in notes below the video, I've put in each individual time that I start answering the questions. So you don't have to go through the whole video if you want. You can do, there's some really good information in here, but you can just skip straight to your specific question and go from there. So first up, Julie asks, I really wanna shorten my lines. You mentioned this in a lot of videos, but I can't seem to find any video that tells me how to do it. Yes, I am well aware of this, Julie. I'm sorry, I gave all that advice out on my other videos, thinking there'd be loads of videos on this on YouTube. Now, it is on my to-do list, but unfortunately at the moment I can't get outside to do it because the weather is blowing 400 knots out here and I can't get out the door to actually do the video. So as soon as I can get out and do it, I will get that video done, I'll get it up on here because it's not just you asking, it's a lot of guys asking this. And I know it's something super useful because as I say, it's something I recommend that everyone does at this stage when they're learning to kite surf. So I'll get that out to you as soon as possible. Alan asks, I'm really struggling to get the board on my feet. Is there anything you can do, or anything I can do to, to help with this? Yeah, there's a couple of things you can do. This is actually a really common problem, Alan. A lot of people think it's to do with people having a bit of a belly. And I'm it, sure it can be, but what we've generally find, this is something that happens to men, and it's something that happens to men that are kind of 35, 40 plus, generally. Often they do have a bit of a beer belly, but that's often not the problem. The problem comes down to what we call posterior chain flexibility. So it's basically your lower back, your hips, your bum. This part of you that just cannot bend enough to get the board on your feet. This can be specially exacerbated if you have had a lower back injury. So those prison people will really struggle. As a bloke, you are actually physiologically disadvantaged as well because our hips work slightly differently to a woman's hips and they don't bend as far up. So we will naturally find this more difficult anyway than women. So this isn't something we see women struggle with a lot, actually getting the board on their feet because of a physical reason. That's more what blokes suffer with. Women and men suffer with the coordination problem. So the first thing I would say, if it's a physical problem, what you need to do is just loosen that up. You know, we, we do do a course on this, on all the stuff you can do before you even get to this stage to prepare for it. Again, the link is in the show notes below. That leads to a video which will tell you what this course is about, but it's designed to prepare you for your kite surfing lessons and take you through all these, what we call store points, step by step while you're off the water, so you can fly through them when you're on the water. And it includes a load of exercises to help with this sort of posterior chain flexibility. That said, if it's not a flexibility problem, it's not a physical problem, some things that you can, or even if it is, sorry, if, if you are struggling with that, the other thing you can do there, stick some rope on the handle. That's a really, really useful one. You know, if you just stick a bit of the length of line on the handle so you can just throw the line out in front of you and hold it on that while you try and get your feet in, that also really helps, okay? Some people just find they can't keep themselves still while they're trying to get the board on their feet. And I don't know if this is what your what your problem you're having, if your problem with a physical problem. But what we often find with this is that if people bring the kite slightly down to maybe 11 o'clock or even 45 degrees, and then angle their body slightly against the kite, and then just put one foot in to start with, lean back, push against the board, and put the other foot in, that can really help. There seems to be a common misconception that you've got to get both feet in at the same time or very, very quickly. You don't, as long as you can hold yourself in position, you can put one foot in, cool, chill out, put the other foot in. And you don't even need to be holding the board once you've got that first foot in. That can really help. What I say on this to all our guys is, look, your body works very differently to mine and to everyone else's. So whatever works for you works. So there's not one way of doing this. You know, the typical way that this is taught, get the kite at 12 o'clock, you know, get the bar out, crunch up, get the board on your feet. Great, if that works for you, awesome. If it doesn't, find another way. You know, a way you can do this, if you're lucky enough to be in a super flat, wa flat water, constant wind position, is just drop the kite on the water. You know, drop the kite on the water, let go, put the board on your feet. Now again, that's not gonna work in waves, but it's a nice cheat if you're really, you know, if this is sacking your will to live, <laughs> and you just can't go on any longer. Cheat, you know, but again, I wouldn't recommend doing that in any kind of waves or shore break, because it's gonna go wrong. 
Um, but whatever works for you works. Find a technique that works for you and go with that. There's no set way of doing this because everyone's body is so different. And this is the stage that highlights this because some people struggle with this for weeks. Some people literally do it first time. You know, it's one of these things that can be so frustrating for some person, another person, what's all, the, what's all the bother about? That was so easy. So yeah, don't stress. Find your own way of doing it. If it is a physical problem, address that off the water, I would suggest, because you're gonna to struggle to do it on the water. There's enough going on out there that, that you wanna have this nailed off the water. But again, if you are on the water doing this, bit of rope on the handle, bump, and off you go. Okay, and finally, John, I'm really struggling with the water start. I managed to get up and riding, but then I lose all power. What's going wrong? This is a classic. This happens all the time. I can guarantee, just from your description there, I can almost guarantee what's happening. What people do, they bring the kite down, they finish off that first stroke, they come up at that point, they get so excited, yeah, I'm riding, I'm riding, I'm riding. They just hold the kite where it is and then sink. So what you've got to do is get the kite back up again. Steer the kite back up. So as the kite comes down, as soon as it's down the bottom, get it all the way to the bottom so you finish off that stroke, but then bring it back up no further than 11 or one on whichever side you've, you've flown on. So if you've flown it on this side, you don't bring it up any further than one o'clock and then bring it back down and keep working it in that area. But I always think of the wall starts as three strokes. It's the down stroke that gets you up, the upstroke that keeps you up and the, third, the second downstroke, sorry, that's what actually drives you forward. So I guarantee what you'll be doing, you'll be bringing the kite down there, the bar will be all the way in, because you're going, yeah, 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 let's ride, let's ride, let's ride, and everything just sinks, and the kite might even stall back slightly and end up in the water. All you've got to do, down, be conscious of where the bar is, so the bar goes out and the kite comes back up, and then you bring it down again, okay? So just, just watch that first stroke, I bet you're leaving the kite down above the water. Get it back up again. Okay, so last but not least, we have Gordon. Gordon sent me this picture and his question is, last session was 15 knots with an 11 meter kite and it feels like there is not enough pull. Or is it that I'm trying to go upwind too soon? And two, do I need a bigger area to ride in or is my starting point incorrect? And the starting point is here, the green dot. Okay, so you're saying this. 368 meters there to ride. And well, honestly, that should be enough to get you riding upwind. Yes, for sure. You know, especially when you're starting out, you will tend to ride the first few hundred meters bouncing around downwind until you lock in that upwind position. So you would possibly find it easier with a bit more space for sure, because it gives you time to, you know, get comfortable, understand what the kite's doing, get used to the conditions and settle down. However, you know, once you're actually happily riding upwind, 368 meters is plenty of room to be getting out and upwind. Um, but yeah, I would suggest to start with that, that you might find it easier with a bit of a longer reach on that one. Um, because it just gives you that time to, to lock in. And we, we do see that, especially when people are starting out, this can take a few hundred meters for sure. Nothing particularly wrong with your starting point as, as such. I mean, from there, I would aim to ride in this direction. So I'd be riding down he down this way first because you've obviously got more space on that side. And yeah, just, just looking at your yellow line, the other thing I'd say there is that, well, straight off, that line isn't upwind. You know, going this way, going this way, you're going upwind. But going this way, that's actually riding downwind. Now, I'm sure you've just put that line in to show me you know, the distance there. But you obviously, your, your angle of riding upwind, sorry, would be more like, well, not even there, more like there would be your angle to ride upwind in that direction. Yeah, so just, just to check that you're actually trying to get out in the right direction. And again, this way, you know, going down... Going down this way, you've got a lot more room. You know, that's probably, if that's 400 metres, that's probably more like giving you an extra 200 metres to go that way. So it probably takes that to 600 metres. That gives you more room to manoeuvre in. But yeah, there's nothing wrong with your starting spot as such there. Again, problem I could see with that starting spot is if you are struggling to, to lock in that riding upwind, then what you could find is that you start to ride downwind. And by the time you do start to lock in, you're in the shore break. You know, you're already here. If you look at this, you're already in that shore break. And from there, you're going to find it very difficult to ever, you have, you need, there you haven't got enough space to get out. 
So if, if that's what's happening, what I would suggest is maybe try and get out even further or start further over onto this side so that then you can lose some ground but start to carve up before you get involved in all this mess here. Because trying to get out through white water, forget about it. You know, if you're, if you're off balance, if you're not already on that edge and nicely controlled, when you're going into the white water, you're going to find it very difficult to come out, especially given this angle that you've got to the wind because the wind and everything else is pushing you straight back onto the beach. So once you're in here, you've really got nowhere to go. You know, you haven't got enough space in this direction and everything's going to be pushing you back on towards the shore. So yeah, I would say that that could be a problem there. As opposed to, what do you say, you're on a 15, 15, meter, 15 knots with 11 metres of kite. Should be enough. Again, that would depend massively on your weight. You know, I, it's very difficult to say without knowing how much you weigh. If you're a much bigger guy, that might struggle. You know, if you're sort of over 100 kilos, 110, 120 plus, you might struggle with that. Again, a lot can also depend on your technique. The other thing to remember here is that 15 knots isn't always 15 knots. You know, you've got damp wind, you have got dry wind, which have different densities and so have different effects on the kite. And this is getting a little bit away from the question now, but it's just not that simple a question to answer without a lot more detail. I would at least need to know your weight to know that it was that. But again, given, given what I can see from the diagram, I would suggest, because I assume that you're not starting going this way, because that looks like it gets pretty nasty straight away. So I'm assuming that you're starting off riding this way and you could end up, not in trouble, but, but having difficult time amongst all this white water here. So yeah, I would possibly get out somewhere here. Again, you're still going to avoid all this mess up here if something goes wrong, but you're a bit further out, so you've got space to start going downwind and then come up. Because you, what you've got to remember is, no matter how good you are, everybody starts riding downwind to start with and then you carve up it's just the better you get the quicker you carve up so you've always got to be aware that no matter how good you are you are going to lose some ground downwind in that first 10 meters so you've got to account for that and again here i would suggest you haven't you know as soon as you've lost that much ground you're in amongst this white water and that's going to make it very difficult to get yourself back up again so I would suggest you're possibly just a little bit close in there. Get yourself a bit further out. Allow, allow yourself, I always think, give yourself about 10, 20 metres downwind, maybe even more if you're just starting out, so that you can recover and get yourself back onto that upwind tack. So that would be my suggestion there, Gordon. Hope that helps. If, if I've missed something there, you want clarification, or you want to let me know how much you weigh, <laughs> then that would be, you know, I could probably answer this in a bit more detail. But I hope that helps you to start. I hope that gives you something to work with on your next session. Looks like a great spot anyway. So, yeah, um, let me know. Let me know in the comments below if that answers your question. Okay guys, so that's all for today. Again, if you've got any questions for yourself, there's a link below this video which will give you the page to go to where you can leave your questions. You can also register for the next Q&A call and there's a link on there that will let you register for these calls where you can come on and actually ask me the question in person, which as you can see, you know, it's great just asking me a question over email and I can get back to you at least, but I can actually bring you onto the call and talk to you face to face. We can get right to the root of the problem and solve your specific issue, which is much more powerful. So yeah, if you want to check that out, the link's in the, link, in the text below this video. Go there and I'll hopefully see you on the next call. Speak to you soon, guys.